What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and one question that seems to come up all the time is how to connect a TV or projector to a home theater receiver. Well today that's what we're going to talk about. Today's video is sponsored by Roborock. So for the past two weeks, I've been using the Roborock S7 Plus to clean the first floor of my house, and this thing has put my existing robots to shame. So the Roborock S7 Plus is an all-in-one robot mop and vacuum combo that has some really advanced features. Not only does it quickly map out your entire house, including multiple levels using LiDAR, but it has excellent obstacle avoidance, voice control, sonic technology, which scrubs the floor up to 3,000 times per minute, and most importantly, it has an auto-empty dock, so it empties the dustpin automatically automatically and it keeps itself charged so the only time you really interact with it is to empty the bag every couple of months. It also has ultrasonic carpet recognition that automatically raises up the mop pad when it senses carpet. This allows it to clean multiple rooms in one pass which is fantastic. And the Roborock app is great. You get tons of options like do not disturb mode, you can set up no-go zones to avoid certain areas, and you can even adjust emptying based on use, which makes it less disruptive. So to get your S7 Plus today, go to the link in the video description. I wanna thank Roborock for sponsoring today's video and let's jump back into it. Now I've done plenty of videos on home theater audio, but I've never really explained in detail how to connect a TV or projector to a home theater audio system. So first we're gonna go over some options for people who are using a projector or TV that doesn't have ARC, then I'll go over how to connect everything with ARC. All right, so again, first we're gonna start with a basic TV or projector that doesn't have ARC. Maybe it's a projector mounted on your ceiling or it's an older TV. Well, what I often recommend for people to get the best sound is a modern home theater receiver. Modern home theater receivers have multiple HDMI inputs so you can connect as many devices as you want. And since the devices are connected directly to the receiver, it gives you the best audio and sends the video to your projector or TV using the HDMI output. This means you only have to run one cable to the TV or projector, which is HDMI. And the reason that I specifically say modern home theater receiver is because you wanna make sure that it not only has HDMI ports on it, but you also need to make sure that the HDMI ports support the video formats that you'll be sending. So if you have a 10 year old receiver, it's probably not gonna support newer video like 4K HDR or 8K. So if you have a TV or projector that supports a newer video format, you're not gonna be able to use your old receiver to send it to your TV or projector. And if this is the case and you don't wanna upgrade to a newer receiver, then it's gonna require you to either use an HDMI splitter or you can use Toslink, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So the idea of using a splitter is to extract the audio from HDMI so you can send video to your TV and audio to your receiver. So let's say you have a TV that supports 4K HDR and you also have a game console that also supports 4K HDR, but you're using an old home theater receiver and you don't have any plans on upgrading anytime soon. So in this case, you can buy a decent HDMI splitter, you'd connect your console to one end of the splitter, and then from the splitter, you can connect a cable to your TV or projector and then connect another HDMI cable to your receiver. This allows you to send high quality audio to the receiver and still send 4K HDR to the TV. And I will put a few options for HDMI splitters in the video description so you can check those out if you're interested. Okay, so we've gone over how to connect a home theater receiver to your TV or projector, but what if you're using a soundbar instead? Well, first you wanna see if your soundbar has multiple HDMI inputs. If it does, then you treat it the same as a home theater receiver. You connect your video sources to the HDMI input on the soundbar, and then connect your TV to the HDMI output of the soundbar. And just like a receiver, you also wanna make sure that your soundbar's HDMI ports support the video formats that you're using, especially if you're connecting a newer game console like a PS5 or Series X. All right, so we talked about using HDMI, but what if your home theater receiver or soundbar doesn't have HDMI? Well, this is where Toslink comes in. Now, I did just recently do a video telling people to stop using Toslink since it doesn't support the newer formats like HDMI does, but if you're in a situation where you can't use HDMI, then Toslink is fine. And you have two options here. The first option is to run a Toslink cable from your optical output on your TV or projector to the optical input on your receiver. And if you have a ceiling mounted projector, this is obviously gonna be a long Toslink cable, which can be problematic, so you wanna be careful with this. But running a Toslink cable from your TV is one of the easiest easiest ways to send audio from your speakers because anything connected to the TV will send out audio from that port. 
And if you run into issues with this or your TV doesn't have an optical output, then the second option is to use Toslink to connect your streaming device directly to your receiver. But considering most soundbars only have one optical input, this can be a problem since you can only connect one device directly to it. This is why I often recommend that people upgrade to a newer receiver to take advantage of the multiple HDMI ports. Now, if you're in the rare situation that you can't use HDMI or Toslink, then you may be able to use a basic stereo connection from your TV or video source, even though I don't recommend this since you won't be able to get surround sound from it. Okay, so we've gone over how to connect everything to a TV or projector that doesn't have an ARC port, so now we're gonna go over how to connect everything if you have ARC. Now I've done a few videos on ARC, so definitely go and watch those videos if you haven't already, but if your TV has an ARC port on your home theater receiver or soundbar also has an HDMI ARC port, then this is usually gonna be the best way to connect your system. And there are two ways that you can use ARC. If you have a home theater receiver, then the best option is to connect all of your devices to the receiver, then connect an HDMI cable to to the TV's ARC port and then connect the other end to the monitor output on the receiver, which should also say ARC. Wiring everything up this way will not only send video to your TV, but it'll also allow your TV to send audio from the TV's built-in apps back to your home theater receiver using the same HDMI cable. The second option is to connect all of your video sources directly to the TV, then use the same ARC connection I just mentioned. In this scenario, the only cable that's running to the home theater receiver or soundbar is the HDMI cable that's connected to the ARC port on the TV. And this second option works best if your home theater receiver is older, since you won't have to rely on it to process the video from your video sources, but you can still take full advantage of its audio processing. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of info, but hopefully I was able to clear up some confusion people had about how to wire projectors or TVs up to your home theater receiver or soundbar. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a few other videos that I've done that might help you out if you haven't seen them already. So I will put some links in the video description to those videos for you to check them out. But that's gonna pretty much do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. As always, if you did, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching, guys and I'll see you in the next video.